In this tutorial in PhotoDirector 365, we're going to look at using the photo animation tool on a photograph. I have this photo loaded in the system. I'm going to move from the library tab over to the guided tab. Next, I move to the animation effects. And in that category, I pick the first option, which is photo animation. This gives me several tabs at the top. Some deal with animation, the left one and the second to the left one. The other two deal with masking. So you control the area that is not animated. Let me show you what happens if you have no masks on it. I'm going to simply draw one or more arrows here. I'd like to animate the water. And then when I click the play button, we find that everything moves with the arrows. We'll stop that. To remove them, you click on any of them, right click and choose delete, or you can simply clear. I'll do that right now. That one gives you a single motion in one direction. The next tab over will allow you to give a curved or odd shaped motion. If I click on that, we're going to see that it will give a little more variation in the motion. So we'll stop that and clear it out. So in most cases, you only want part of the image to be moving because it looks rather strange if it all is. So you have two tools to limit what is actually moving. We'll click on the third tab and we have this pin. This gives you anchor points that keep still. So I could put some anchor points around all the people here. I'll do this very quickly and not precisely. You get the, the point and around the chair here. Okay, and everything that's not in an anchor point may move. Let's go back and use a single arrow. I'll use a couple of them, just go this way. And we'll play this. And now we see we have movement, but it doesn't contain much inside the anchor point. Now, if you notice very carefully, if we look up here, I'm gonna zoom in, we have movement on his upper face and nose. Because even though you're using this kind of tool, it's not totally precise. It doesn't prohibit all of the motion that you might see. And I found that a little bit disappointing. But let's clear this and look at the other way you can do it. The other way you can do this with this tool here is actually called freezing, but you basically build a mask. If you're familiar with the photo director, you know that we do a lot of masking in Photo Director. So I'll take a moment and pause the video and I will proceed to mask all the people as well as this chair. And let's see what happens when we mask it. I've attempted to draw a pretty tight mask around the gentleman, the guy standing in the water and the arms of the lady behind him. So let's see what happens when we go back to our tools and we try to add motion in different places where we're trying to make it look like the water is moving. And we play this. We do have motion in the water, but you notice we still have a little bit of motion around the individuals, even though they're masked. So I found that this tool, even though it it helps, it, it doesn't eliminate the oddities of that. So if you only want part of someone to move, you have to be very careful. Let's try one other thing. And what I'm going to do is stop this. And let's see what happens if we take these, these points and move toward the mask. And I'm going to take this one and move and delete it completely. These small ones. And now see what happens. We'll play this. No, it's still not what I want. You notice a change over here. We have a change over here by the guy's leg, a little bit coming off the back of the neck and also off his back. So if you want precision with this tool, it's not quite there yet, but let me show you what else you can do with it. Let's assume for some reason we're happy with what's going on here. We've added a bunch of these controls to make it look like the water's moving. And now we want to produce a video using this. There is an option on the left called background music. I'm going to click on that. And then if I click on the three buttons, it lets me pick the music. Now there's several kinds of music that come default. 
and they come with a picture that really has nothing to do with the music. But I'll click on the picture here, and that get, opens up the music. I can change the in and out points. I can fade in and fade out, which is a default. So I'm, I'm choosing the duration here of the music, and I can turn the audio on and up and down as loud as I want, and I can play it. But there's more than music that's going on. What's going on? I have other options here. If I add the beat effect to modify the hue and to use a glitch, if I want the glitch to go away, I need to turn that down to zero in the middle, but I still have the saturation and the hue. So if I play this, the glitch is gone, but I still have saturation and hue. The saturation goes from a minus 100 to a plus 100. Let's see what happens when we, if we lock that down to a zero. What do we get? Let's play it. Now we're just getting the green. If we take this one and we put this one at zero, let's see what happens and play it. Now we have nothing. So these are the defaults. You can choose to have a hue on either range of the slider, a glitch or a saturation or all of them. And they will do that to the beat. Let's, let's go back to just saturation only. It will be a beat to the music and that's what you will get as a result. I want to mention one other thing. There's My Music. There's a tab called Store. If you click on Store and you've downloaded any options, audio beat effects, uh, you will find them here. And if you want more in the store, you click the down arrow. That will take you to Cyberlink Application Manager where you can add other elements that you would like that fit into this category. I just clicked on Audio Beat Effect Pack Volume 1. And so now it's adding another segment of the, these beats. And then I can close that out when I'm done. But let's assume we're happy with what we've done in this case. And I'm going to click on OK. Now the option on the lo lower left corner is to produce. We'll click on the produce button. And here we have a place where we can send our file. We can produce it as a GIF, a WMV, or an MPEG-4. We can choose our aspect ratio. We can choose the size. Then when we decide to produce, we've got a duration. We can shorten that down if we want to and click on the produce button. We won't do that here. But you actually get to produce a genuine video out of your photograph with the animation attached. I don't know when I would use this tool, but if it appeals to you, if it might fit in a certain circumstance, it's an interesting way to do something very unique and creative to a photograph in PhotoDirector 365.